This expresses the universality of the power of music to seduce and convince and persuade anybody of anything. Well, the Trana Consort is um, a group that specializes in medieval and renaissance and early baroque music. Here in Toronto, we're one of the only games in town, as it were, to hear this kind of music. People who go generally to modern opera houses, they might see a Baroque opera once in a while, but they also might not see it performed on historical instruments. The main difference between this harp and a modern harp is that this harp has three rows of strings. A modern harp has one single row. This would be a minor chord, a D minor. If I want to play the F sharp, I have to stick my finger actually inside. When you look at it, you see it looks quite different from the one you might have played in grade school. If you look at the finger holes, you'll see that they're quite a bit larger than you might be used to. And at the bottom two, there are no double holes. So I can still play chromatic, like half steps, but I just cover half the hole. He has that stroke of genius that the great masters all seem to have, where they transcend what is expected. I mean, that's what's fascinating about Monteverdi is that he combines several Renaissance forms and, and compiles them into a new work, opera or favola in musica, which was a story in music, a play in music. In a modern opera, you just play what the composer has written for you on the page. In Monteverdi, I mean, he's not really orchestrating the music. He's giving us a score the way a Renaissance composer would and giving the players a lot of freedom. It tells us what chord to play. We have to decide where to play it, how to play it. He actually writes embellished versions of some arias and unembellished versions. It kind of gives you freedom to experiment and be yourself. And so just be sure that we go right to the middle of, of bar 15, 16. middle of 16, and then take the breath, if you know what I mean. There's two definite phrases there. So bar 13. Of the Italian language set to the music the way Monteverdi did was, was it, it's, it goes straight to the heart of the game. It's just fantastic. This is going to be our grand finale for our 45th anniversary year. So we wanted to choose something that was a really very special piece. The subject of the opera is how powerful music itself can be. Orpheus, who is this famous singer-songwriter, so he's been long in love with this girl named Eurydice, and then on the day of her, their wedding, she gets bitten by a poisonous snake, and he resolves to go and get her from the underworld. The wife of Pluto is, is trying to convince her husband to allow Orfeo to take Eurydice back to the netherworld. Same spot, Mosa Tanto. This is the great thing about Orfeo, that it has such a range of musical styles. There are choruses, there are dances, there are laments, there are moments of great anguish, there are moments of great calm and, and peacefulness, and it's all represented in the music. It's fantastic. Mm -hmm. 